and we are live so welcome everybody to the first episode of the fulfilling destiny podcast and i gotta tell you my heart is pounding like crazy this is the first episode and we are live and we are here on time Woo! so anyways i'm your host jan and marini Packlib, and these are my guests uh if you unmute yourselves, please. Aya Masantuglo. Aya Masantuglo. Francesca Guerrero. Francesca Guerrero. And Ruth. And Ruth. <laughs> and Ruth. So these are my guests for tonight. And actually, Editor Son is here too. So would you like to say hi, Editor Son? You'll just wave. Okay. <laughs> Anyways, so before we actually jump into today's topic, what I would like to share uh, to everyone who's watching right now is thank you for hopping in into this very ambitious project that I have, which is this podcast. And the reason why I want to share a couple opening thoughts is that I feel one I feel that one way that our supporters can really understand our organization's message is to have a conversational platform like this, not necessarily Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn not name dropping or shaming the, these companies, but it, it will show our viewers that we could have very deep and mature conversations on topics such as menstruation, women's health, period poverty, and homelessness, which is very rampant in our country right now. And being able to have these sometimes uncomfortable conversations is how we grow as adults. And I'd like to learn, I would like to learn as well. Because there are some some topics I actually don't know uh, much about them because I was never educated. So I'm hoping with the guests that I have here today and with our founder who is here today, she could offer some light in this uh, new project that I'm undertaking. And with that, everyone unmute yourselves. We're going to start our first episode. We're going to talk our first topic. Actually, before we end it, happy belated birthday, Aya. <laughs> happy belated birthday. Woo-woo! Thank you! And also happy, well, I guess happy birthday to Fulfilling Destiny. It's we're three years old now. Yes, we are. Time flies. Time flies. Time flies. Oh, I got chills up and down my spine. It was actually just coincidence that I found out that it was Fulfilling Destiny's birth month. <laughs> but yes, it was. it's it's a wild, it's a wild ride. So. I'm like literally shaking right now. <laughs> I can I can barely contain myself. Don't you don't need to mute yourselves. I would love to hear your laughs. I would love to hear <laughs> the there you are. I can hear everyone's beautiful voices I, right now. <laughs> I sometimes I can't believe it myself. Just today in the car I was telling my husband, I say, Can you believe it? it was just like three years ago we drove all the way to Sacramento to get start all all the paperwork for fulfilling destiny. Just because we don't want to wait another month, you know, to start helping and getting people involved in this special uh, topic. So, yeah. Oh, really? So you were supposed to push it back another month? Yeah, because I made a mistake on the name reservation. When I reserved the name, that was a mistake. So in, in order for me to rectify that, I have to wait about a month or so for that name to expire before I apply again and i didn't want it to wait the option was you wait or you can just go in the office and get it done mm -hmm. so i got my husband and my son in the car and we drove to sacramento <laughs> nice wow so where where were you from you said you drove to sacramento where were you earlier san diego oh San. oh then you went up yeah. then you're back yeah yeah <laughs> That's well, we went to the Bay Area first because my brother and his families are there, Patricia as well. Mm -hmm. So we went to see our families and we spent the night and then the next day we just drove to Sacramento and then drove back to San Diego. Wow, that's, that's a long drive. That's a very, very long, long drive. That's well, a... I didn't drive. My husband did all the driving. So <laughs> <and nice. laughs> that you get that to, always works. You get to sit back, relax, enjoy the sights while your husband's like, I hate people. I hate driving. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I really enjoy stuff. driving. So which is good. Every time we drive, to, we, we have to go to the Bay Area. He's the designated driver. Just sit and relax. Well, I mean, that's 
Well, it's great because now that you're here and actually, if it wasn't for social distancing, I would like to be sitting next to you right now and having this conversation. <laughs> but it's it's actually really great to see everyone here and to have yeah. have it all come together in this current moment because I know I was like stressing about this for weeks. <laughs> I only had three weeks to make this happen. So it was it was definitely a wild ride. So um, actually, Aya, for your knowledge, uh, these three, including editor son Ruth, Francesca, and editor son These were the individuals that actually helped me do the pilot test earlier. Hi, Ruth. Hello. Hi, Francesca. Hi, editor son I am forever <laughs> grateful. Thank you so much. On behalf of the Fulfilling Destiny team and it everyone that we are supporting and empowering in san diego and the bay area mm -hmm. i say thank you no honestly i'm really no grateful because i i was like thinking like all right who needs to be on this first obviously and we need to have our founder here she should be here for the first episode and then it's like oh. we should i want to bring more people in because maybe they are in a similar position like me where i didn't know really anything other than the surface surface level of like homelessness period poverty and other issues surrounding menstruation so it's like i'm gonna bring in two of my close friends and have them come here and you know learn with me at the same time so it it was fun having our pilot test because we could talk about anything but now it's just like all right let's get a little bit <laughs> let's get a little bit specific and then let's get a little bit you know education let's get you know let's get our brains uh primed for something new since i'm not currently in school right now <laughs> i need other <laughs> ways to learn <laughs> i feel that yeah so exciting. so i mean other other than that like other than the three weeks of stress of finding guests putting together the professional gmail to making the youtube account the descriptions and everything else in between uh I actually learned quite a lot. I learned how to video edit. I learned how to do audio syncing. Definitely did the MacGyver way of trying to put Zoom into the streaming software that I'm using in the description below and then putting it here so we could see everything. But oh goodness, it was, it's nice seeing it all come together. I was literally like a nervous mess for like 12 hours, just seeing the hour countdown, but I'm glad that it worked. So. Thank you again to everyone who's here, uh, who is watching, especially uh, anyone who hit the subscribe button. Please do ding ding the subscribe button <laughs> aggressively. <laughs> Show us some love. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so Melanie, I if I could just say something, you did mm -hmm. a phenomenal job. I am so proud of you. I just I, I email you that um, I couldn't believe what you have done in less than two weeks. And it's, it takes someone with a, a heart, a kind heart that wants to do something to make a difference, to shine a light on a topic that no one really want to talk about, to bring this uh, podcast alive. So it's, it is an amazing job you did. So you should be proud of yourself. Speaking of that, <laughs> editor someone was trying to message me and then <laughs> I didn't move the chat to the side. So whoops, my bad. Sorry, editor son. Uh, other than that, um, to, to have it all come together with your support, Aya, uh, for giving me the green light, it's amazing. Thank you again for this opportunity. And then now that I dealt with it, right? Now that I finally dealt with all the other issues, I'm going to close the window so we can focus on getting into the nitty gritty topics for today. Right? So since Aya, you are our founder, our president for this organization, Tell me a little about a little bit about your history. Where did fulfilling destiny like pop in your head? Like I didn't want to do this for you know women, children, our sisters out there. Where where did this come from? Well, I was uh, I was born and raised in West Africa, Togo, oh. particularly Togo. So um, I have experienced period poverty myself. So as a young woman, I always knew that I want to help shine light on period issue, the issue of menstruation and period and how it is taboo in my country that you can talk about it. The culture doesn't allow you to actually openly talk about it. Mm -hmm. So having gone through that, I vowed to myself that when I have the opportunity to help someone else, I will do so. 
And then when I came to America, I didn't speak any English, so I couldn't, <laughs> I couldn't really help. I couldn't do anything. It took me a while to go to school, learn English, and it all started coming back to me after I graduated from uh, San Diego State with my Bachelor in Health Communication. Ooh, alumna! <laughs> alumna! I know, right? Mm, Go ask yeah. Them. <laughs> yeah. That's... So my last semester, I was trying to do pro my project on something that I'm really passionate about. Mm -hmm. One of them is clean water in developing country and the issue of period poverty. But after doing my research, I couldn't find anything local, like a statistic, a local statistic to um, do a total outcome of my research. So I put that on hold and I went on to do my research on um, clean water. After graduation, I know I didn't have the mean to start an organization, but the idea won't leave my head. So I did few research more and I reached out to Dr. Recker so Aztec, <laughs> and <laughs> Aztecs. Dr. Record, as as well as my longtime friend and mentor Patricia Reed, who is our uh, vice president, and I told her the idea that I have, and I don't know what to do. So those two people guide me. And if any of you knows Dr. Record, she doesn't like me calling her doctor. No, Richard Record. <laughs> Record. She. <laughs> She sent me to home to do homework, do more research to make sure that no one else is already um, working on the issue of uh, period poverty in the community. Mm -hmm. And if someone is already doing so, then I should reach out to those people, partner with them or ask them more questions if we can work together because we are, all, we are in this together. I did that. And after a few months, I'll say about two months, that's when all, everything all came together. We got our name, reserve, we reserve the name, we got the name, we applied for um, Arukov Incorporation, we got that. It usually takes, uh, they say, three months, but our works came earlier than expected. And we were able to um, continue the process with the IRS. And meanwhile, I was reaching out to friend, uh, friends and family for donations so we can start distributing parts and tampons um, while going through the, the daunting task of <laughs> creating a nonprofit. <laughs> yeah, so that's how Fulfilling Destiny came about, based on my personal experiences and the need that I saw in the community here in San Diego. And my experience as a student in SDS, at SDSU, the education that I received kind of prepared me to be able to start fulfilling destiny. That sounds like a really wild journey. That's amazing. Yeah, sure. <laughs> it, it was, and it was scary too, because I never run an organization before. But oh. then I'm someone who believes in when you are doing something with your heart that is serving other people and empowering someone and making their lives better. I believe that people will follow you. People will see the work you're doing and speak volume and they will follow you and support what you're doing and so here we are rocky yeah here, here we are we, we did are. It. <laughs> three years later oh, yeah. wow three years what did i do in three years you know for a project that long i don't think i've actually done anything to that scale like make an organization from the bottom up while continuing yeah that's life. amazing <laughs> that's a lot of hard work do you have any questions uh for uh a, uh, otherwise, I'm just going to blow through a lot of questions because I have so many. <laughs> <laughs> well, not to, not, to, not to leave my husband out of this, my husband and my son, they were with me through the whole process. I remember my husband and I will do the dignity bags in our living room. When my son goes to sleep, he will want to help, but then he may, he'll just <laughs> make more mess. So, yeah, he, oh, if it children. wasn't for the support of my husband and my family and friends, I, I wouldn't be here today. Fulfilling Destiny wouldn't be here thriving. I, so, thank you to everyone. 
we're like 500 members plus strong last time I checked. So that okay. speaks to your yeah. testament of hard work and outsourcing and reaching out to those who are equally as passionate about helping you know, women, our sisters and children in need for some of these dignity bags. Uh, as those are, I, those are a, a godsend, really, because <laughs> I can't even imagine what that would feel like because I've never personally experienced stuff like that. But I know that I had to make some financial sacrifices when it came to either paying for something that I need to eat, right? Or I needed to make sure I was clean and safe and all those other things in between it's wow <laughs> i that's that's amazing but speaking about dr record <laughs> i did have a meeting with her <laughs> the other day oh. uh she's an equally like powerful independent woman that i had the pleasure of meeting and i it's it's a shame that i wouldn't be able to have a further conversation with her until maybe two weeks from now but she sends her support and love when we were discussing like where are we going to take this further like how deep and deep are we mm -hmm. going to get into these conversations about you know different types of poverty you know social then there's the financial and then geographical poverty right and then talks mm -hmm. about different feminine hygiene products that may or may not be to those who are experiencing homelessness she mentioned that and i will probably get into another topic about that on another day and then she mentioned that there are a lot of other students out there who i would love to meet one day uh to come talk to talk to me about these things like i need to learn because i definitely didn't know and i felt really out of my depth at one point because she was telling me all these things like wow i my education has been sparse <laughs> i definitely don't know about these things and now that uh thankfully you as our founder and our president has uh guided me along this journey i love i love to know more about that so it's as far as Dignity bags, since you started with dignity bags, I was actually kind of curious how many can you make on your own? Say, with at the time, I can make 100 or 200 a day, a few hours. Oh, goodness! I just sit in my living room and just turn the music on. Yeah, I think our listeners should know what is in a dignity bag. Oh, yes, please. Okay, yes. yeah. Uh, we call the little bag we hand out dignity bag because we believe in making, when you're giving a gift to someone, we believe in making that gift personal. So our dignity bag are handwritten, have handwritten notes or uh, motivational code or just oh. pictures. And including the bag, we have two kinds. We have white. The white bag has tampons with flushable wipes. Sometimes we get other donations as well that are needed. We put them in there. But most importantly is tampon and flushable wipes. The brown bag contains pads and flushable wipes as well. And when we get other donations such as toothpaste, a toothbrush, and brand new underwear, it goes in there as well. So that's what we call a dignity bag. And we make them personal. So that nice. uh, menstruator that get that bag know someone took the time and care to make sure that when they get the bag, they have a smile on their face. And they're not alone. We're all in this together. Wow. I, yeah. that's, that's really heartful. I actually didn't know that you used to put quotes or like messages that to show that they care. Because if I receive something like that at, you know, at in that moment, I think I'd cry. <laughs> I, no, I definitely. Be, I would be eternally grateful to receive something like that. So as far as uh, we're going to move move along with the dignity bag. So we're partnered with some several organizations. How often would you send these dignity bags to some of the shelters that Fulfilling Destiny is a part of? Like once a month, twice a week, stuff like that. I'm kind of curious. I don't, I don't know much about it. <laughs> Sure. Uh, prior to COVID-19, it's monthly based. Every month we distribute the month to our uh, partner in the community. And I don't do it by myself. I have uh, an amazing team 
that support him. Yes, yes, that support him. Drop off the donations, but the, every third Saturday of the month is our uh, outreach month where we go in downtown, fulfilling Destiny Team, and we always have uh, volunteers from the community. We have people, new people every every month for the downtown outreach. We walk the street. We go to uh, New Good Day Center. We serve menstruators there, and then we just walk the street. We see anyone on the street. We approach them. We talk to them, and we ask if, if they need menstrual product, and we hand them the bag. But it's every month prior to COVID. Because of COVID now, some of our partners are now receiving outside donation. We just started giving back donation again, and I'm hoping that it will allow us to continue giving them menstrual product. Because in this pandemic, menstrual product as or as necess necessity as any other product. And we, as administrators, we cannot go without it. We all For need sure. this product, yeah. Absolutely. No. It's not like we could stop. It's our biological clock. And it's going to happen every right. month, whether or not we mm -hmm. like it. Right? And I sometimes I, 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 it bothers me when people don't look at um, menstruation and period, the menstrual product, as a necessity. I'm like, it is a necessity. We need those things. Otherwise... We'll be bleeding through everything, you know? Mm. Exactly. Yeah, it's... At least growing up when I... When we all started mentoring, like, we definitely wanted to avoid having those... When I when I was growing up, we called them accidents. Like, ah, uh, you you're, you know, you're spotting or you're showing, mm -hmm. like, wrap your sweater around your, your waist, Ooh. you know, to, to yeah. hide it. Even though it's like, yeah. I can't stop it like even if i could time it right to the day or within the week that i will have it it's like you know well, who who if we call someone i'm shrugging my shoulders but i'm just like all right who knows when it's gonna happen i could be in class i could be having a presentation and right. it's gonna hit me out of nowhere and there's nothing i could do about it but just to, right. to be prepared but right like you said in the pandemic i could only imagine that even getting food supplies, right? PPE, you know, yeah. uh, all those other versions of hygiene that we need to keep ourselves safe from COVID-19. We, like I said, we've forgotten that there is another issue that's underlying all that, like women who need these supplies. And I'm sad to say that, like, I didn't think about that up until the time until I joined Fulfilling Destinies. Like, oh, help the help homelessness communities but what else, you know? Like, not Thank just you. food, water, PPE. What else am I missing? I was like, ah, yes. Yeah. Feminine hygiene products. Right. And it's, ooh, it's just crazy. It, it, it's a wild, wild run. And I know that we had difficulties funding. So this is where I put my insert. If you'd like to help fundraise for more dignity bags in the greater San Diego area and also San Jose, and other parts of California who have menstrual outreach programs, please go ahead and click our link down below on the YouTube channel <laughs> and check it out. So you're more than welcome to donate actual like pads, tampons, flushable wipes, or monetary donations if you'd like also. So make sure you click that link down below and let us know. And if you haven't already, hit subscribe. Because I know you're watching, hit subscribe. <laughs> thank uh, you in advance. Thank you. Yeah, thank in you. Advance. Thank you. It's, oh, goodness. It's... If I may add one thing, mm -hmm. when you talk about sweater, <laughs> it gave me an apology <laughs> because when I was in um, elementary school, sweaters became my best friend because I don't know where my period is coming, right? And mm -hmm. yeah. I always thought, and I guess boys make fun of me, and sometimes I don't want to go to school when I have my period because I'm like, I don't want to be making fun. I don't want anybody to make fun of me. Plus, I don't know how to take care of myself. The the material we use is not very, um, I would say sophisticated. It's not the best. Right. I think we've definitely so, all had those, right? Yeah. Those moments. Yeah, sweater. 
And then you wonder, even with the sweater, you wonder, okay, did I go through the sweater? Is someone looking? Does someone know I have my period? Oh, yeah, that anxiety. It, you know? Always. Yeah. And I, then you're always wondering who already saw. And yeah. Right. Who are they going to tell? tell mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. I, I know yeah. I've asked Francesca and Ruth sometimes, like, when I know I'm hitting those hormonal highs and lows, like, hey, am I spotting, like, butt check me like literally butt check me <laughs> oh the butt check a classic yeah. classic the classics, for everyone. Like, it's like hey hey uh i think i'm on my period can you like butt check me real quick because you know mm -hmm. and I, yes. I especially in sdsu not yeah. not shame same down some of the seats are very close together so when you have mm -hmm. to walk across or climb across other people your butt is literally in their face yeah and it, mm. if you are unfortunately spotting throughout the time it's a little mm -hmm. you shouldn't feel embarrassed but it's in, it's embarrassing in that moment and it or when you get up from the seat and, it's and on then the it's, seat. if you see it on the seat oh dude, i i have a horror story sorry let me like let me share this i felt so bad uh this mm -hmm. one time so yeah. i have a friend i'm not gonna name drop her here <laughs> but she knows that she's listening um so she actually took me to class quite a lot like we carpooled a lot because i didn't want to take the trolley anymore uh because it's just such a long such a long drive and when i knew that i was on my period but i was already prepared i had a pad i felt i felt comfortable i felt clean but uh sometimes it doesn't well catch everything right so we were in the car for a while and it was about night time she dropped me off back to my car i stood up it's just, it stayed the seat. And I was just like, oh! I was felt, it leather or? I'm trying to think. I believe it was cloth. It's a type of cloth. Oh, so I was just yeah, like. The fabric one. Yeah, I was just like, oh my. It was the first time. Like, I know between her and I, we're very close. And like, we understand that's a thing. But at that moment, that was the most I've ever left, say, like a mark. And I was just like, mm -hmm. I did mm. I felt mm -hmm. so bad because then I really did have to go because I had to go to work. So she had to clean it up for me. And I feel very, very guilty. So to the individual who knows, I appreciate you and I love you. Uh, but that, that that's just a reality. You feel mm -hmm. shame. You feel anxiety when you don't know if it's going to leak, right? Or right. it's going to happen and you're not necessarily prepared. And especially right. to... I think this is just my personal experience dealing with it. It's just that... I could go through a week's worth of supplies thinking that it's going to drop, but then it doesn't. Yeah. And then when mm -hmm. I least expect, it's like, surprise! And that could be to, like, to someone who doesn't have the financial means. They'll be like, well, I just burned through my supplies. I don't have anything anymore. So what right. am I going to use? Like, toilet paper or, you know, heaven forbid, cloth, socks. Oh, <laughs> when you've been in that situation. Oh, yeah. It's and people just... do use those things. People mm -hmm. do use those things, which is unfortunate because they are not very hygienic. Oh. It can cause other infections, right? So yes. I don't want to think about it. Some of us are very fortunate that we can afford to buy menstrual product mm -hmm. on a monthly basis. Most people are not. It... Most people are not. And it's... I, I, as a... A young woman growing up, I didn't quite understand it. But as a woman now, I, I say to myself, I have to help. I have to help. I have to help. Because my mom always say, when you're in a place in life where you can afford to help other people, do so with joy. Because one day you are going to be in the same situation and someone is going to open their arm to you and help you. So it's all our responsibility to help menstruators. We have to help each other. And we That's shouldn't true. have to whisper. We shouldn't have to whisper when we're in class, right? We shouldn't have to whisper that, oh, do you have a tempo I can bottom? No, oh, we should yes. be able to so guilty of that. Oh, that happens. We should, we should be able time. to talk openly. Like society make menstruation and period looks so bad that mm -hmm. I see it. It's horrible. It's I can't even Dirty. I can't even start by naming the name they they call <laughs> period migration. It's it's I'm not saying. acceptable. If mm -hmm. we can talk about sex openly, so can we talk about menstruation and period? 
Yes, mm -hmm. because exactly. it's bi bio biological in it in us, and there's nothing we can do about it unless you're in menopause or pregnant. You're gonna have your period. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. that's very that's very true. Because I've I I think we all have done it. I know I did ask the two of you before about those things, like you know, in the middle of lecture, like hey hey hey, like, psst, do you have <laughs> do you have something? It's <laughs> almost like a secret drug deal that you have to do. Where it's like, <laughs> oh no, I don't have it. And then and you have then, to go asking other people. Uh, yeah, and that's it, the... and it's like there's a stranger there that you have to ask because maybe she'll have one. So oh, I've, I, I've handed been, out so many pads I've been to other saved. people. I've been saved by other female classmates. Like, actually, one guy. One guy. Um, oh, who was really, to that guy? Yeah, one guy actually had... I believe they were a couple. From That, oh, okay. that was just an assumption, right? Uh, but he... In his backpack, he had his own. In case his girlfriend didn't have any in case like she ran out and you know oh, he's the backup for that backup that's a turn on that's, that's a <laughs> great that's awesome. no but it, it, it's it's a thing i know that in some like small lecture classes in college that we had it's like yo anyone got a tampon someone like throw it across the the, the room like here you know <laughs> put, put it on like go 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 but uh it's i i don't like the fact like you said aya that as a society and even as cultures, depending on you know where we're from in the world, mm -hmm. we've always been put into that. Say like, don't talk about your bodily needs in that way. It's like we don't want to hear about it. I don't want to see it, even though it's like it's as complete, it's as normal as eating and drinking water. Yes, and pregnancy. Like even if you want to go to pregnancy, pregnancy is normal. And like, oh, we love pregnancy. Oh, that's beautiful. You know, congratulations. Like also, it's just like, hey, don't forget. There's other reasons leading up to that, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. If, <laughs> if we didn't have these periods, then we wouldn't be able to get pregnant. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Like, yeah. Exactly. It's, it's like it should be normal. It should be as normal as anything growing up. And I know that having. Uh -huh conversations about this with our parents or older siblings or older female like role models in our lives like it, it it's important too and it's like why do we have to hide something that is fundamentally important to our needs and mm -hmm. like you said we can't turn it off and i don't want it ever think that someone is going to use something as not as hygienic and i know yes. that's a it's a real thing for some of the women out there who needs to use like a sock or like paper stack towel. of tissue paper yeah just to hold it in because even then periods are not the same it's some right. are light oh, some yeah. are heavy some are super heavy right and it's just like you know there's that there's also like that stigma like you can't keep going to a library just to keep using their rolls of toilet paper just to clean up and I know I only say this because I did work at a library. I'm not going to say where, but the majority of the patrons there were individuals who were experiencing homelessness. And I know that they used those public bathrooms to clean themselves up to the best of their ability, right? With whatever they could carry on their back or on their like cards, backpacks, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And of course, I put it out of my mind because it's like, it's none of my business, but it should be my business. I don't, mm -hmm. it's like, so, like, someone's going out of their way to go to somewhere public to do it, and they should have the privacy right. to do their business, whatever the business is. Right. So it's sad and disheartening that I didn't really put it all together up until now, my early 20s. Like, even yeah. though we're so focused in ourselves, focused on keeping our families clean and all that stuff, we should care about others as well. That's a, it's a shame. But luckily, hopefully, yeah. with this, we could talk about it in a, in, a, in a better open discussion. So thank you, Aya, for sharing all those lovely things. My pleasure. <laughs> when you think about it, when you go to public restrooms, if they do offer tampons or pads, you usually have to pay 50 cents. And Dude, how yes. many people carry change with them? Exactly. Right? Exactly. Like, it was... It was dumb in high school. Like, even in high school, like, oh, yeah, pay 25 cents. It's like, bro, my lunch card 
Like, I can't swipe my lunch card even though it has all yeah. the money in it <laughs> for me to get. It's like, hey, do you have, like, 25 cents? Like, oh, no, sorry, dude, I don't have 25 cents. Like, you know, I can't swear here, but the I swear but word... But we all know what you were thinking. Yes. Just, like, oh, <laughs> great. That's terribly inconvenient. Yeah. Oh, actually... And considering, like... How young people can start their periods? Like I also started when I was in elementary school, oh, and I yeah, yeah. so I, I was elementary. around nine years old when I started. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness! And Me just too. like when I would look down and I would see that I had it, and I wouldn't carry around pads at that time. No one really told me to do that, Ooh. and so they they don't offer pads anywhere in the bathroom and not a lot of my peers had started yet so i'm just sitting there in the bathroom i cried a lot oh no many times because i would just be like i can't get up i can't do anything what can i do to like find my way to my backpack where i know i have pads and i would stuff a bunch of like uh toilet paper oh, into yeah. my pad and like or not my pet, if I had a pet, that would have been great, into my underwear. <laughs> right, right, right. And it's, like, really uncomfortable. You can kind of feel it, like, leaking around because you know that it's not the proper yeah. material you need for down there. And so it's really weird how we want, like, our girls to be educated about it, but we don't even provide the right resources starting from the early age because I heard about girls who started at, like, six or seven and... I'm just like, why don't they offer free pads or tampons in the bathrooms so we don't have to walk all the way to the nurse's office or we don't have to like ask our peers who might not have started or, yeah, because sometimes even in high school, some people haven't started yet. Mm -hmm. So it's And also mm -hmm. with the, with charging for it, you don't charge for other bathroom supplies like toilet paper or the seat covers or the right. paper towels. All so right. it's very unfortunate that they're charging so much for one pad. It's counterproductive. Absolutely. Very. And they're not even the best products, too. They're not comfortable. Uh -huh. Have you guys worn it? <laughs> oh. <laughs> so many times because I forget to pack more or I couldn't get more because I didn't have, you know, I couldn't go to the store regularly. Or mm -hmm. my schedule was too full to even consider stopping at the market or like a 7-Eleven name drop here. But, you know, we're not sponsored by them, by the way. <laughs> but those like those things like they suck. I don't necessarily trust them, you know, and even to these dignity bats, I would like to think that whatever we're donated or whatever we buy personally from our pockets to fulfill these dignity bats, we get them something that makes it feel good that it's comfortable, yeah. that you could use and definitely. trust a product reliably. Because I definitely mm -hmm. didn't like the ones that they put in the bathrooms at any facility, you know, heaven forbid. They're awful and outdated. They are. <laughs> they are, and they, they yeah. shouldn't, I shouldn't have to pay 25 cents for that. It's like, that it's could be... It's 50 now. It's what? It's 50 cents. They raise it. Ooh. Sometimes I, I've seen, I've been to a place where it was a dollar seventy five. For what? terrible. And That's I was awful. like, are you serious? This is why we have to fight. We have to pass legislation to free, free the tampon tax. You know, why do we have to yes. pay tax on tampon? Why can school provide menstru menstruation products for mm -hmm. free? It they provide band aids for free. Really? They do? I didn't know that either, but. That's a... I, I get band-aids from, like, <laughs> if I need them from the nurse's office. Yeah. Like, even even going to the nurse's office in high school was a shame, too, because some, some of the individuals in my high school couldn't afford it either. And then we would run through the nurse's office uh, supplies quickly because they their products there were a little bit more better. Like, quality-wise, they were better. But then they run out so, like, so quick and you're stuck with the bathroom you know, not so great quality mm -hmm. one. So it's annoying. But I do have a, one horror story to talk about. Is that, hey, you mentioned that some boys, you know, in your youth or like some people, even, I guess, even girls at the time, they would make fun of you if you were on your period. Well, there was a terrible, terrible prank that was very consistent for about all the time I was in middle school. Uh, 
pad and tampon snatching. So yeah. if you caught wind that some girl was on their period, you would go into their backpack. So at, in, the, in the middle school at the time, you couldn't bring your backpacks inside the classroom, right? So like, if you knew that girl, right, and you know what her backpack was, go in and you take their pads and you leave them with nothing and you do it for a bet. Oh, that's awful. It's yeah, it was awful, and I knew it, it's a cruel, 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 cruel thing to do. And I know there was a girl who actually had a big breakdown. I'm not gonna name drop her here, but she she was really upset. So she started a lot younger, kind of like Ruth in a way. Started a lot younger than what most people, I guess, most like the average. If the average is like 12 to 13, she started really young. So she she's already comfortable knowing that oh, I'm gonna you know to take a pad or a tampon to clean up right, right. but then apparent i think the how it went is that she was she she felt that it was coming she wanted to be prepared and then when she went to check her bag it wasn't there and so she had a big yeah. big big meltdown completely valid absolutely for sure i would cry too but- i cried <laughs> <laughs> yes Horrible. We found the guy who did it, and he got reprimanded. I believe he got suspended, but it's just like... Rightfully. Rightfully mm-hmm. so. You know, it's the just emotion. like... The emotion... Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Let me, let me finish this thought, and then I'll let you start. Uh, it was terrible. It was terrible to see just that different type of distress, and this is not including other bodily changes that girls go through during puberty, right? Like, getting taller, getting more filled out in certain places right the PMS the, getting shamed for that but that's another topic yeah that's another, we can slip into that after but you know all those other things to worry about like the start of women objectivity mm-hmm. you know you're not a child anymore you're starting to become a woman and that's a whole different issue so that, like i said that that kid got suspended and the girl luckily luckily obviously she was with a female teacher at the time she got it all got sorted but then it was kind of like a thing that sticks to my like oh what's one thing that you regret seeing in middle school it's like kid, that was definitely it <laughs> that was mm-hmm. a different type of vibe and i didn't like it but if we're gonna slip into the ideas of pms i don't like hearing it either <laughs> it's like oh why are you all angry or why are you so hyped up today are you pms it's like excuse me <laughs> yeah. I, I do not like that like, especially insane. when you're not like, because mm-hmm. because then it's they're not even taking account just this is just how you feel right now and you're just trying to pretend like it doesn't matter because i'm on my hormones are out of whack or something like that yeah it's that's like, not fair it's like if i decided to yell because i had like a bad traffic day going to work I was like why are you so angry today you pmsing it's like did you not check a calendar like we're literally in the middle of the month and no i'm not pmsing <laughs> Like, can't I be angry for some small insignificance in my day? Don't I get the right to be annoyed? Like, hey, you have a you have a son, right? It's like, right. say he was being a little difficult with you in the morning before he goes off to school. Then you carry your bad mood to work or whatever. It's like, mm-hmm. you're like, hey, you're PMSing. Get over it. <laughs> like, that's annoying. Excuse me? <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. He would start a fight. <laughs> <laughs> insert in the subtitles just the eye roll emoji for me it's, I, eye I rolls will, for all of us I, I think, will at this heavily point. emphasize the eye rolls when I put closed captions on this later it's just I hate hearing PMS because it's not just females who go through PMS biologically mm-hmm. speaking um, it's mm-hmm. even men they have those moments of sudden heightened emotions heightened rage or anger aggression depending on what what is going on but even then like hormonal fluctuation is just as normal and it needs to be normalized you just have to treat others with kindness like maybe he or she or they are going through something right now let them write out their emotion and then they'll probably apologize for how they were acting or you know you just gotta Keep it natural. Keep it natural. I like, agree. cause it, it it won't do it won't do us any good if we're like, oh yeah, this guy or this woman is just going off, PMS. Like, no, just you don't know what kind of day she's having. Let it like let her be. 
He's probably getting it all out now before it gets put into something else that could be dangerous to herself right. and to mm -hmm. others. So do not, I, I highly suggest, please don't use PMS anymore uh, when you're referring to others who are going through some emotional upheaval at the current moment. Let them write it out, right? We all call it, agree on that. Okay. Of course. Right. <laughs> but it's... It's a well, actually, now that I'm looking at the time, eight fifteen, forty five minutes. <laughs> oh. I I mean, <laughs> it's fun. I like this. It is. <laughs> <laughs> um, actually, since we have a little about fifteen to twenty minutes left, I actually wanted to ask you, Aya, for as your as the founder, the past three years, how satisfied do you feel about fulfilling Destiny's message about period poverty, menstruation, and homelessness? Here in the greater San Diego area and onwards. I'll say I'm satisfied, but we can do more. We can mm. reach more people. The more people we reach, the more we create awareness. Then more people know about period poverty and the issue of poverty, then it will be come normal for us to just say the word period, period, you know? Instead of just having to worry about what other people are thinking about menstruators, I will say we still have a lot of work to do because this is just the beginning. We need to make sure that menstruators all over our nation and beyond have access to menstrual products. We need to make sure that we come together with mm -hmm. le legislations so that they can take away the tax, period tax. We don't need to be paying tax on, on our oh. period product. We don't need to be doing that. They are necessity. So our hope of fulfilling destiny is to continue partnering with our community organizations and beyond and create awareness reach more people, get more people involved so that we can all end this crisis together. I think, I believe it is a crisis because if mm -hmm. a menstruator cannot afford to buy her menstrual product, then that's a problem. Then they use something else that is not clean, hygienic, and that co can cause other problems. So although Fulfilling Destiny has done great job in these past three years i believe we have more work to do and oh. together mm -hmm. we will make a great impact we'll create change together my follow-up question to that since like you said you think you could do more uh where would you see fulfilling destiny in the next five years i know that we are expanding to the san jose area um mm -hmm. is there any plans to expand further than that like say at, like back in San Francisco and Sacramento and then maybe out reaching to other states. Is that in the plans in your, for fulfilling this state? It's, it's, amb it's ambitious for sure. I just wanted to know what your thoughts were. <laughs> it is. It is in the plan. Uh, we currently have one of uh, our vice president, Patricia Reed, her daughter is in San Francisco. So she has done uh, a couple events there. So we're looking into that. And my biggest goal for fulfilling destiny in the next five years is to also be able to reach my own country, my motherland, Togo, because mm -hmm. period is still considered taboo and talk about, <laughs> and talk about topic and there's no accessible menstrual product for young women or menstruators to use. And my hope is to be able to, um, educate young women there and make menstrual sure product available to them as well wow there's there's none right now well in the city in the city people that have a bit of money can afford to buy but they're not very sophisticated in the villages in town menstruators sure still use cut clock you know what, what's it called yeah rugs they just cut them and they use Ooh. them those are not very i use those as a young woman and wow. you bleach them easily and i feel like because we don't the education is not 
a day, we need to provide education. If you provide the education for these young women, they will be able to take care of themselves. So right. That's one of my goals. Education, mm -hmm. accessible menstrual product to women, uh, young women and menstruators in my hometown to go. Specifically, check what they did for. Uh, and thinking about Jan's example of that boyfriend, mm -hmm. I think that reaching males too, because you have a son, and I think that that would be valuable yes. for them to know about it and like be mm -hmm. educated on that so that they are aware of it and they don't think poorly of it and yeah. you just don't have that whole like stigma right. around it mm -hmm. right. i agree um prior to covid my son goes to most of our event mm -hmm. places the kid allow he's there <laughs> he help <laughs> he help he help make now that he he was about three you know two something when fulfilling this he was going to turn through when we started fulfilling destiny. So he helped along the way. When we used to do the monthly donation drive, he will be there with me the whole time. Mm -hmm. When we go do drop off, he goes the Saturday morning uh, outreach, downtown outreach, that's why he doesn't go because he doesn't wake up Saturday morning. <laughs> 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 Otherwise, he, get, he does get upset when I come back and say, mommy, I wanted to go. But that's the goal. I want my son to know that women or menstruators having a period it's completely natural and there's nothing to be ashamed of. It's that we need to celebrate menstruation rather than shaming people. So that's my goal. We need to educate our boys, definitely. Yeah. And this is how I knew my husband was the one. When we're dating, he will go to the pharmacy and buy me uh, Name pads. drop your husband. Woo! Hey, yeah. True so love. <laughs> that I gave him that. He used to go to the pharmacy and buy me uh, pads. I, because I didn't know about tampon before. I only knew oh, about tampon oh, when did? I came to America. So yeah. Ah, that's mm -hmm. true. That's true love right there. I have He's hope for the future. <laughs> so when I do get upset with him sometime, I remember those days and I'm like, okay, I'll give you a pass. <laughs> so yeah. that's that's amazing. I mean That is. For for our viewers, we will we will have a separate episode specifically talking about culture st like cultural stigmas right mm -hmm. and even family stigmas when mm -hmm. it comes to dealing with her periods but we could kind of get a little bit in it as we start to slowly wrap up it's uh it's who teaches you that is the most important and then as the majority of the panel right now is all female except editor son uh we've been taught by mother figures or older sisters or aunts you know, or even close friends who right. went through it first. That's how we've been educated. But then I don't know, um, Ruth, Francesca, or even you, Aya, if our fathers or male figures were involved in that process. And I know that in my personal experience, uh, my father is just, he'll buy it for me. He'll buy what I need, but he won't talk about it. But it's like, that's fine. still doesn't know which pads to get. <laughs> he tried. Yeah, yeah, my dad will always ask. My dad won't even talk about it. He doesn't want to know. Mm, yeah. You know, don't get close to him. Yeah. The, the, the <sighs> idea that it's, you know, dirty. When it's really not. Mm -hmm. My father, people, yeah. <laughs> my my well, father did choose the wrong ones a couple times. But it's just like the thought counts. He knows that I'm going to need something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But, you know, he still won't talk to me about it and then yeah, right. our experiences are different because it's either they don't talk or they know but they'll keep quiet or in your case Aya, nothing to do with it at all yeah. and it's Archer. it's a sh it's it's a shame because yeah. definitely mm -hmm. all our siblings sisters <laughs> and brothers should be at least aware because you know mm -hmm. what if you know in this case like Jokingly, I will say Mommy Dearest. What if Mommy Dearest isn't around when something like this has happened? Who do I turn to next? That I could, right. like, right myself. away. <laughs> myself. Myself, <laughs> and if my sister's at home, my sister. Yeah. It's just me. Just, I can't sing a song because then I'm going to get copy <laughs> <laughs> It's a Beyonce right. song. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's, it sucks. And mm -hmm. it's, 
something that I'm glad Aya, that you're taking the time to teach your son or you're normalizing period talk around mm -hmm. your son. You may not even be aware of it, really. He's just like, oh, this is normal. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, I'm just going to, you know, pack these up, you know, put nice tape on it, write my name. Here you go. <laughs> yeah, he, he knows pad. He knows the difference between pad and tampon. And I explain it to him as his little mind can understand. He's very smart. So he understands some of the concept that we oh, haven't gotten so in the depth of, you know, how women bleed on a monthly basis. I tried one time, I just got to so many conversations. And but as he as he is getting older, my goal is to make sure that he's educated on period issues so that he can stand up to someone on the street that will want to bully a girl because the girl or the administrator has their period. Hey, have That's your son, great. Have your son be that that boyfriend in the future. Always have a backup. <laughs> Always have a backup for his his future significant other if they are um, female. If not, then you know. Or menstruator. Or, or menstruator. just a friend. Even just yeah, a friend. Yeah, even just a friend. Or, fr yeah. or anyone in their life. Anyone yeah. who needs it. Dude, yeah, it definitely. To the strangers who offered me pads. To the friends who offered me pads, and to those who didn't shame me, thankfully, mm -hmm. for you know accidentally bleeding several of my clothes. Just. Thank you, and thank you for making me feel clean. Because now, now if you if you did it for me, I encourage others out there, especially our viewers, to do that for others out there. You know, consider making dignity bags for fulfilling destiny. Consider if you cannot gather supplies for us in that way, feel free to donate. You know. Check our links below, you know? Smash the subscribe button as well. <laughs> and it's, it's, again, that, that is the hope that I have for this podcast to talk about these seemingly uncomfortable topics. They're, they shouldn't be uncomfortable anymore. They should be comfortable. Right. And since it is normal, it's biological, it's not going to stop until we reach menopause. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what, up to 40 years. You know, depending. Up to 40 years that we're going to be stuck in this cycle. Right? And so if it's going to be about 40 to 30 years of menstruating, we got to help those who are going to be menstruating. And we got to do it with dignity. Yeah, mm -hmm. and even in menopause, you still spot. Right, of course. Yeah. And and nowadays, even at 40, some, women, some menstruators don't get their menopause. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 40 plus, yeah. It's a, it's a long, long stretch, and it varies from women to women. The amount of flow varies mm -hmm. from women. We just need to, mm -hmm. we need to be aware of those yeah. changes that we're going to all yeah. go through as females are going to be menstruating. But yeah. as, well, because of the time, uh, we're going to go ahead and wrap it up for today. But what I would love to, again, point out is that this is just the first episode. I do plan to make more. I do plan to meet others who could talk to me about the ideas of period poverty, the ideas of menstruation, and the ideas of homelessness. Because these topics need to be discussed. They need to be out there. And we need to be comfortable having these conversations. Otherwise, it's going to get brushed under the rug, and I don't want to see that happen anymore not when we are in a society that is digitally connected especially here you know and then that we need to be sympathetic we need to be kind and we need to show compassion to those who are suffering and are looking to the more fortunate help them so to all my guests here francesca ruth and our founder and president aya thank you so much for joining me i it's been <laughs> It's been a wild ride. It's the first episode. My heart is like pounding like crazy. So you did great. <laughs> Thank you. Great. Thank you for having us. You did great. Ooh, it's yeah. uh, like I said, like the title of the podcast. Uh, I believe it's the beginning of something special. This is the beginning of something special, and I'm so fortunate that everyone here, including you, editor son, uh, who made this all possible. And again, I would like to thank Fulfilling Destiny for giving me this opportunity. 
The board of directors who gave me the thumbs up to talk about such difficult topics. To the Goddess Study crew who had helped me watch, edit, and of course, uh, our guest panel today, our fine ladies and editor son, for joining me today. And for everyone who's watching, and you're still here until the very end, again, please hit that subscribe button. Ding, ding the bell button so you don't miss an update from this crew. And then I will see everyone next week. So look forward to that. Okay? So bye, everyone. And bye. There we go. Bye. Let's say bye. Bye. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you so much.